Hello, Dadrian. We're going to uh, take a look at your aesthetics and control, and also your um, son as key hosting here. So let's take a look. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, there we are. And uh, give a little bit of feedback. See what we uh, see what we have here. Um, so obviously, the first thing um, I see is that these are too dark, um, and that's just a result of the thousandth uh, of a of a second with not enough light. <clears throat> As you uh, increase the shutter speed, remember that is less time um, that it has to open and shut. Then what happens is the um, the aperture, if you have it on shutter priority, in other words, you're controlling the shutter. The camera is controlling the aperture, the aperture being that size of that hole. As you decrease the speed, meaning, I mean, you increase the speed, meaning it's faster and faster that it opens and shuts. What's happening is you're de decreasing that time. So it has to increase the size of the hole because the light need the, the the sensor needs a certain amount of light whether it's getting a little bit of a light amount of light for a long period of time or a lot of light for a short period of time it's still the same quantity think of it like filling a a coffee cup up the goal is to fill the coffee cup up it doesn't matter whether i fill it up slowly with a little stream of coffee pouring out or they fill it up really fast with a lot of coffee Either way, the goal is to fill it up. So what happened here is you set it at a thousandth of a second. And so the camera tried to open up as wide as possible, and it did. However, that still wasn't enough. It still wasn't wide enough for it to completely expose properly in the amount of time. In other words, it only still was able to fill up only that much of the coffee or that much of the exposure. So therefore you got the dark picture. It wasn't enough light. So what you, your only other alternative was to shine more light onto the scene, make it more bright onto there. Um, that would have been the, the correction for you to make, which was hopefully what everybody or you guys were discovering um, and would have put two and two together on, on that. When you see it dark like that to go, Hmm, let's see. It's a little puzzle for you guys to solve. I could have given you the answer, but what fun is that, right? Um, you know, uh, of how to correct that. Uh, the same thing would happen the opposite if you did it for the um, uh, for the long shutter, but it, it tends to be a little bit less problematic for the longer shutter. Um, now, at an eighth of a second, it becomes really about this sort of middle ground where you you can sometimes hold the camera steady and sometimes not. Um, you're going to get a little bit of movement, um, but not a ton of movement. So you, it kind of becomes this middle ground. And then you get the half a second. And this is where you really want to start exploring the characteristic of the movement to almost forgive any movement and really kind of exaggerate it. And I think this one is getting really to the point. Um, you have enough of the subject to let the audience see what it is or to feel like there's a grounding to it. There's composition, meaning you have a, a balance of shape and texture and tone and rhythm. There's texture going on there. There's quality of light. Yet there's this sort of energy in the movement that, that has a, a, a beautiful quality to it. The same thing with this. There's no apologies that you're making for the movement. In fact, you're saying, hey, guess what? I'm going to do this on purpose. This is is an aesthetic that um takes practice it is um definitely something that viewers um will accept if it is done in a careful and deliberate way um and it doesn't always work um it can look a little bit forced sometimes but um it is something that when it's done in a way it can add a lot of emotive quality and it can add a lot of energy to your photography i mean just look at this. This is extraordinary what you've done here. This is a beautiful, um, quite beautiful. Um, I think it, it speaks of eruption. It speaks of the internal energy. There's this sort of, um, you know, um, 
a, a, a life about what's happening here, growth. Um, it's just, just, just quite beautiful. And, um, you know, of all of the ones, I think you really kind of nailed it on this one. Um, this one's getting to it as well. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people discover, you guys are discovering something um, when, when you get to this part of the experiment, like, hey, wait a minute, um, photography doesn't have to be totally in focus. Um, the how deep, this was a pretty much a straightforward exercise here. Um, this is where I wanted you to explore the concept of depth of field, where you see objects um, slowly coming into focus um, based on nothing more than depth of field. And you can see that happening here to a certain extent. Um, everyone's camera is going to be a little bit different. Uh, in other words, of how much range you have, how many different f-stops that you have. But as that aperture gets smaller, you're going to get the illusion of more focus. What's really happening is the focus is simply falling off more gradually is all. Um, the focus happens on a very thin plane, as I described in, in class, and it kind of then falls off at a certain range depending on where um, the aperture is. So at a very shallow depth of field, it falls off very quickly. Like the peak of my, the, my fingers here is the, is the, is the main focus right up here. And then at a, a like 5.6 or something like that, it falls off very quickly. And so the front of the image here and the back of the image here falls off very quickly, but at 22, it falls off gradually. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a slope like that. Um, and so you get a you get a depth of field that looks like things are more in focus. So and it, they are, in fact. I mean, if it looks that way, then they in fact are. Um, and so that's that's the experiment. It's really to get to know your camera and to understand the uh, visuals of um, of what that is. Oops, didn't mean to click completely out of your um, um, out of your uh, image there. All right, so let's move into. Um, down to your exposures. Now, these are meant to be the same exposures, meaning they're they're meant to be duplicating the same um, exposure. And it looks like on the first one we kind of got out of out of there, meaning the first one didn't quite work, um, and then it got a little bit brighter, and then you kind of got there on these these, even though your depth of field obviously and your focus is different, that's fine, um, but the exposures look equal here. Uh, the first one isn't, um, and so. You could see the difference here um, in what happens. You didn't, this one, I'm not sure what, what's going on with this one. Maybe you uh, did a, uh, um, maybe you told us what the um, shutter was on it. Let's see. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. I'm all over the place here, aren't I? Let's go to yours. Here we are. Um, let's see what you've got here as far as identifying this one. No, you didn't put what the combination is, unfortunately. So I can't really see what's happening here, but clearly these are too dark. Um, and then what we wanted to do was match those exposures um, to each other. In other words, be able to set different things on, our, on, on manual exposure and be able to control both the shutter speed and the apertures um, so that you're moving both of them in, in various steps so that you can match them based on, well, I want a fast shutter speed and a wide open aperture, or I want a wide open uh, uh, or a slow shutter speed and a closed up aperture or somewhere in between, that you can start navigating those options and kind of customize and really kind of create your own solutions and still get that cup filled up to the right level, get the right exposure. That's what it's hopefully um, going to start to teach you. And just through repetition and through more practice, you'll get there. Um, you'll definitely get there. So the you know better, then that, that's your opportunity to really just start exploring, to kind of use all of the things that we've been working on in the, in the first two projects, the 10 experiments that you guys have been doing, um, and, and kind of work some things out. Now, you know, we, we, you, you've added a couple of personal items here. That's cool. Um, they're kind of, you know, out of place a little bit, I think, but um, that's fine. And then we get into some of these, some of the movement here, which I think, again, kind of makes it feel a little bit more like you are 
um, like finding a way to look at things. Um, this is quite quite interesting, even though the, the subject matter is a little kind of weird, like, you know, why are we looking at the iPods with this? Because it is very subject-based rather than shape-based. Um, when you get into this, it becomes a little bit more shape-based, meaning it does, it, it's irrelevant that they're iPod, um, uh, or, or, or I'm sorry, that they're um, ear pods, um, but a little bit there, they come in focus here, but uh, it becomes more about the shape, it becomes more about the tone and the color and those kinds of things. Um, here, these become about photographs of objects a little bit more. Uh, I really like what you're doing here with sh shadow and and the light. The lighting is quite beautiful. Um, and this being a lighting class, that's ultimately the, the most important thing. Um, we want you to be exploring lighting and the qualities of light and subject aside, I'm really looking at that most importantly. Um, so lighting, you're doing an excellent job. This is really an interesting um, solution as well. Maybe coming in a little bit tighter here so that this vignette, which you're shooting through, you know, a bone here, I think. But if you came in a little bit closer, so this vignette was a little bit closer to the edges, um, I think would have given you more option there. Um, this is a beautiful photograph. Um, shallow depth of field. You've got some excellent quality of light going on with the diffused lighting. Um, it's just quite beautiful. Um, the subject is a little quirky, that's all. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that anyway. Um, so let's jump on over to your, um, your sunlight here. I close off here and move up to your other. Um, there we are. Sun as key. Now, this one was actually a pretty straightforward. This is kind of like an intermediate um, kind of a project that we worked on, kind of get you out of the studio, working with others, kind of to prepare you for that following one, the one you guys are working on um, where you're following the sun. But this gets you out there and kind of working with it, um, direct sun, skylight, deep shade, and then working with um, window light and um, working in teams and kind of um, uh, exploring how the sun um, can be used as the um, as the key. This is kind of a, a, a an interesting thing. I'm glad you got up nice and nice and close um, and doing any kind of images like this. It's really important that you are able to um, um, get the kind of detail um, that you're getting here, the scales, the, um, the eye, all of that thing. Um, lizards always look sort of smug to me. <laughs> they always look like they're like, hmm. yeah, really? Um, uh, a beautiful, um, beautiful shot. Um, you, you're, you're taking advantage of the fil filtering kind of idea uh, of the, uh, of the leaves where even though it's direct sun, uh, the leaves are doing the job of diffusing it for you. Uh, you're using the short lighting or the backlit, slightly backlit, um, idea. You've got this really kind of interesting curve that's happening right in here, even though it kind of goes up to these, to this corner. We want to avoid that in most cases, um, where if this was pacified down here a little bit more, this stick came down here, you'd be in much better shape, uh, compositionally it would be. Um, but this is a really kind of interesting solution here. Um, and then moving into skylight where you're in that, um, no direct sun, um, but it is, you're reflecting light back into the, into the scene, um, using a variety of different things, um, either mirrors or, um, uh, regular reflectors, things like that. You can really, this is probably the more ideal way to work outside is using open shade because you can, you can always grab light and throw it into there. Um, you can always, you know, uh, 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 reflect light in there in, in, a, in a number of ways. Um, the light tends to be quite diffuse. So you can then, um, have deep shadow without it getting too um, too dark and, and blocked up, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I think the most uh, effective ones of these are going to be where you're using shape a little bit more um, for composition so that our eyes can sort of see where you want us to look. Our eyes are directed to where you want us to look. Um, here, where you have a dominant element where these leaves are sort of leading us into the composition. Uh, an image like this is, is you know, kind of a little bit less um, direct. Uh, I can see that this group 
is sort of what you were looking at, but um, is it strong enough of an element to bring us in and act as the uh, as the key element? Um, this is again more of a pattern that you're creating here than um, than a key element, meaning a, a, a focal point, um, that kind of thing. I think it's quite beautiful what you're doing here in terms of pattern. Um, this this bit here, I'm not sure is is doing what you want it to. I think it may be kind of interfering with the image just a little bit. Um, but lighting wise, I think it's all it's all working for you. And then we get into the um, into the window light, which brings us in a way back to the studio. Um, on location, you're going to find a lot of um, instances like this. If you ever going to do photography um, for exchange for resources, money, um, you're going to go into like places of business and they're going to want you to make photographs of their of their place or whatever. Um, you're going to have a lot of shots where there's windows. Um, and so being able to manage that is a is an important thing. And to give you the experience, again, we're gathering a bunch of experiences here is an important thing. Now, glass, clear glass is a tough one. Um, and I think you're handling it pretty well. Um, this does relate to basically a, a, a photograph of, of, a, of a glass. Um, doesn't really transcend it too much, but um, lighting wise, I don't think it's um, it's uh, it's too bad. Um, this one gets a little bit dark on you. I think you could have gone a little bit brighter on the composition, meaning uh, or on the exposure, meaning a little bit more time or a little bit more open on the aperture, um, just so we had a bit more detail in here. At the same time, it's a wonderful kind of organization of the space. Um, very clean. In other words, the composition is very organized. You get all the lines are straight. It definitely tells us that, you know, you want us to see this as an ordered form. Very, very good. And you're not shy about it being backlit completely, making an image where the window is the focal point. Um, again, this is kind of cool. Got a good idea where you're shooting through an object, this sort of voyeuristic feel. I think if you were a little bit closer in where the where the circle was a bit bigger, uh, you would have served you a little bit better. Uh, we're, we're a little bit dark on the edges and uh, really all we get is this hole. So if it was it took up more of the compositional space, it would have been a, a, a much better situation. So overall, I think I think you've done a, a, a you know, a pretty good job of of handling um, what we see, except, of course, for those uh, those first few images were just dark, um, as you as you can see, that'll be easy for you to uh, to recover from and resubmit. Um, that's fine. That's why we have the resubmits for you to be able to, um, you know, take chances and learn. That's what we're doing here. We're not trying to, you know, throw you out there and say, well, you you know, done a bad job or anything like that. So um, I just wanted to point out those things, which you probably already knew those were dark. I didn't need to say. So um, that's what I have for you. Um, I appreciate you uh, waiting on the aesthetics and control. We lost that data. So um, you got a uh, two for one uh, on this one. And I look forward to seeing more of your images in class. All right. Bye now.